Hey folks, Steve here. Uh, today I am working on some... I'm not really tracking, I'm not making new tracks. I've done that already in my sequencer back here, but I thought I'd show you the process that I go through to get what I've done on my sequencer over here onto my hard disk recorder. It's kind of cool. Um, in most cases I'm only doing uh, drums and bass. I will occasionally put a string or something on there and then I do the piano separately off over here on my behind you on uh, my Baldwin piano bill. But this is kind of a good way to get that done. So I've already done a video showing how I put the drums and whatnot in. This is actually for a song called Live Fearlessly. So what I'm going to do, sorry I know it's kind of hard to follow with the camera being moved around. I'm going to go over here on my hard disk recorder and I am going to say we want to set it to record and we'll go from track one Oops. I want to go direct, there's a lot of different ways to do it but we we'll go from track one to input four meaning whatever comes into input four gets dumped on track one and then I've already done this song so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go into my tracks and I'm gonna set it to virtual track two because I have eight virtual tracks for every one of these tracks which means I can do eight different versions see what I like if I want to I don't typically go to that much trouble um, but it is something I can do so I'm gonna put this little experiment on virtual track two. Okay, so and then I've got something on three and four, so I'm just going to turn those down. Now over here, this is kind of cool. You guys have all seen this little screen that's on my on my uh, sequencer. I'll see if I can get close enough to have you be able to read any of it. Probably not, but I don't know if you can make that out or not. But on that screen, here's a bunch of tracks, essentially. Over here is track one, 10, which is sort of the default drum thing. They put it top, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. And you can see some of these little rectangles are filled in and some are empty. The empty ones have nothing happening. The filled in ones are where there's sound. So what I do is over on the digital hard drive recorder there's a setting that I create to make it the master. And over here I turn this into its slave. It's not my usage. It sounds very like S&M. <laughs> but, uh, but that's just what they put it in there so I go into the settings system edit and let's see here we don't want it if this were set as master then this would just be doing whatever I wanted it to so we say sync mode I want to be slave you can be slave MIDI or slave MTC or remote slave MTC is the one that works with my hard disk recorder. I'm not sure what that stands for to be perfectly honest. I'll have to look that up and talk about it another time. It just is what I've been doing for years. And then down here there's an MMC mode. Again, don't really know what that means exactly, but it can be master or slave. You gotta put that on slave as well. Boom. Now, go back here and on this column you have play or mute play or mute on every single track. So what I do is I mute out everything that I don't want played and there's nothing on these tracks, so just these first few and then I put play on the ones that I want and now when I come over here <clears throat> on my hard disk recorder because I've already set it up to be the master all I have to do over here is actually push play and instead of 
plane, it goes into a wait mode, just sort of waits for a command from its master. And then over here, I can just go, okay, record, play. And I have the volume really low, so let's try that again. So I push play. And over here, I simply say record and play, and it starts it for me. Where's my hand? Yeah, record and play, and it just starts the track. And this one kind of starts out without much of a beat at first, and when you hear the song, you'll know why, but... And boom! So now it's capturing what's over here. Pretty cool. The only thing that can be frustrating about this is that... Um, get that away from my face as much as I can. Sometimes... Uh, for whatever reason, when you're doing one of these, it'll just be going along fine and suddenly the, the connection will just get inter interfered with in some way and it'll just stop. And that can be frustrating because, you know, if you got a four minute song and it makes it three minutes and 52 seconds and then stops, you have to go back to the beginning and do it again because syncing it up like this is what ensures that everything is perfectly lined up. And that's what, when you're going to go do your live stuff, like when I put the piano part down, uh, when I have a session player put a guitar part down, when I sing, i got to count on those tracks being lined up. That's what makes it as if there was a band in the room. And so that can be kind of frustrating. So you have to do those one at a time. And if you, So if I have, on a really complicated track, I might have bass, drums, horns, strings but most of the time if there were like say organ or anything a piano anything like that I'm gonna play live the strings I never go too far beyond putting like a pad it just softens everything a little bit uh, horns I'm not I'm not gonna try and use phony horns and and get too crazy uh, trying to make them sound as if I had Chicago in the room you know um, but I might put them put a, a bop or two here and there um, for flavor. Those things I want lined up perfectly and the advantage of doing it like this is that I can quantize them and they're just perfect. You know, uh, but if I quantize the piano part or some other keyboard part, it, that starts to sound awfully mechanical. So I try to play the piano part live. I try to play the the if I put an organ or something else on there, I try to play that along with what's already been put down. And, and that is, the, the drums, bass, and the strings, and the horns, or whatever, are all going to be pretty well locked in place and, and real solid. So that gives me a firm foundation. And it makes it sound a little more human to have at least some parts that haven't been quantized. But it makes it sound a lot better to make sure that you're really locked in with the drums and the bass than it would be if I tried to play it live on, on every single track. Because I'm just not that. That's not my specialty. So anyway, that's a little bit of what's going on. So I'm, I'm getting close. I only have three more tunes to get guitar parts on. And um, then I'll... I've done a couple of final mix downs on, on things already and so mostly what I have left to do is uh, send off, complete the, complete the work on these three last pieces of music, send them off, get the guitar parts, dump them in and then do final mix down and master all of them so that they're all at, at their peak uh, volume and I'll talk about mastering another one and then um, should be good to go. I've picked out the album art that I want already um, and it's being worked on right now so this is uh, becoming a reality. I hope I can make my release date. I, my work will be done certainly by November 4th. If there's any delay in the release it'll only be because 
iTunes and whatnot are being slow to accept it. That some every once in a while they do a random like inspection or something, and and if that happens to catch my song, one of my or my project, then it could delay it by a week or a couple of weeks. So I'll keep you informed on that. But I'm on schedule, and my work will certainly be complete by then. And um, definitely the digital release will happen first. And then uh, I will come up with a, I will do a physical copy release, but I don't want, I've put too much work in this to just put together a piece of crap CD that I made out of my home burner and, and slap one of those annoying blank white labels on it. I mean, it's too, first of all, it's too much work and then it still looks like shit. Sorry, but it just does. Uh, these are not home demos. I've tried to put together like really good quality recordings and so I want them packaged uh, professionally. This is for posterity. So I'm finding, a, I'm looking for suppliers right now that I can have real CDs printed up with, with real full ju jewel cases and inserts and all that good stuff. And got to find one who isn't going to make it so expensive that it makes no sense. Hopefully I can find a print-on-demand place, and then I'll definitely let you know when those are available, too, because I know some people will want to get some that are signed and whatnot, and I need to be able to take them with me on gigs and things. So, anyway, but this has been a lot of fun, and we're closing in on just a few few weeks of work left here, and uh, Live Fearlessly will be out there. So, thank you very much. Thought I thought you might enjoy seeing kind of how that worked, and... Uh, I'm sure I'll think of something else to talk about before it's all over. So, Okay, take care. And remember, if you're not having fun when you're making music, you're doing it wrong. I'm Steve Lunger, and thanks for tuning in.